Hi, my name is Mr. Krieger. I'm the engineering instructor at Bishop Hartley High School. and We're going to do a little activity today, but I first want to talk about the engineering program at Bishop Hartley. It's a project-based set of classes where you actually get to work with a bunch of different equipment, a bunch of different software. It mimics the freshman year of engineering and computer science at college. Also, you have the ability to get 12 hours of college credit by the time you leave here in engineering and computer science. That being said, we talked about a project-based class, that's what engineering is, so we're going to do something that we do in the electrical engineering class, introduction to analog circuits. So you're going to build this analog circuit by the end of our time together. But in order to do that, we have to lay the foundation. So we have to talk a few things like what are analog electronics? What are breadboards? A little bit about LEDs. They're very finicky the way you put them in a circuit. We gotta talk about paths, circuit diagrams. We gotta make sure they're complete. We're also then we're going to build the circuit. We'll summarize a few things, and then I'm gonna talk about what's next. So analog electronic is what you think it is. It's electronics. It requires a power source. It also has components. It needs that complete path. You go from one end of the battery to the other. And finally, what makes it an analog electronic is there's no computer hardware. There's no chips. There's no boards. There's no software controlling it. It is simply a dumb piece of circuitry. The components we're going to use in our demonstration today start with a battery and a way of hooking it up. So we have a 9-volt battery, way of hooking it up. We're going to use a momentary push-button switch. Then we need this little doohickey right here. It's called a resistor. What a resistor does is it controls the flow of voltage. So we have this voltage. It's actually too much to be used by an LED, so we have to control it. We have different colored LEDs you get to work with. We're going to hook everything up with these are jumper wires. And then we use this breadboard to make our connections. The breadboard allows us to do initial prototyping. If we look at this breadboard, um, we have these different sections. Now, I really don't want to talk about what's top, what's bottom, what's left or right, because it all depends on the way you're holding it on your desk. But if we look at it, we have these strips here, we have these strips here, these red lines, these black lines, red lines, black lines. These are called buses. If we look at it, this hole right here is connected to this hole right here is connected to that hole right there. So electrically, we can combine things. If we put power to here, we can pull power from there. Same way with down here, we have negative. Now here we have two sets of holes. These are connected electrically. So this one is connected to this one. We have this ditch. It's this recessed area in the circuit, and you can see it when you get yours. We're going to use an LED. A little bit about an LED, it has polarity, meaning it, the electricity can go only go one way. It comes in the positive and goes out the negative. You can tell yours by the fact that the positive, the anode, has a longer leg. So when you see that, that has to be wired first. That's going to be wired next to the resistor. Then you see this. This is a little schematic. You're like, what is that symbol? It shows what an LED is. If we think about a picture, a path, we can see this circuit up here. We have a battery. We have a couple of meters and a resistor. But what happens if yours doesn't look like this? What happens if you're in a foreign country and you can't read these words? So we have developed in engineering, we've developed these international symbols to show something. We can take this symbol and we can take it to any college in the U.S. or abroad for that matter. We can show them to another engineer, another scientist, and they can understand what is going on with this circuit. And that's what we're going to use. Notice it's a complete path. We start from the battery, goes all the way around. There's always a path. If there's a break in that path, the electricity won't flow and your circuit won't work. The symbols we're going to use today start with our battery. LED, you've seen that already. This is a switch. Notice it's in the open position because the arm is up. No, nope, nothing is flowing. If we close that switch, then we're going to get electricity flow through it. We have a resistor, and finally we hook everything up with the wire. 
Last thing about the switch, notice there's four little legs. When you look at your switch, when you really inspect it, you're going to see four little legs yourself. So here we are, phase one. Why do I say phase one? Well, phase one, we're going to build it without the switch. And that's what we do in engineering. We start with small and build up. Because once I get this working, I can just add the switch. If the circuit doesn't work at that point, I know I need to examine around the switch. If I ever happen just to put all everything together and it doesn't light, well, do I have the LED messed up? Do I have the switch messed up? Is the battery messed up? So we do it in phases and we start simple and we work more complicated. We're going to use the battery, the battery connector, the LED, the breadboard, resistor, and jumper cables. And you can see our path as we go from the battery to the resistor, other end of the resistor, to the positive of the LED, the long leg, and shoot all around. Okay, so here we are, we got our breadboard. I'm gonna put it in that orientation. Step one is coming from the battery and heading down here. So what we're going to do is take this red lead and put it in one of the red buses like that. Doesn't matter which one, you can put it here, you can put it here, as long as it's in one of the red striped, you're good. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna go from the battery to the resistor. So once again, we take our jumper and we can put it anywhere in the red stripe and then we're going to just put it anywhere on the side it doesn't matter I can put it here I can put it here I can put it here you're just gonna pick a spot and put it in next we take the resistor now this is sort of important where you put it you have to put it in the same line as where this jumper terminates. So like right here, I have it in 11. So I have to put it somewhere in 11. It can be right next to it. It could be all the way down. It just has to be in this row 11. And then I take the other end and then I can just put it anywhere I want. Down here, it doesn't have to be It can be anywhere you want. If you notice, I put it in a uh, hole two from the right side, but over here I put it in row um, hole five from the right side, but it's in row 21. From the resistor, we go to the long leg of the LED, and you can see I have a long leg, which is the positive. Once again, this does matter. We have to put it in row 21 where the resistor is, long leg first, and we just s slip it into there. So you can see our path is being formed. It's a complete path. So what we need to do is we need to start going from this end of the LED back up to the battery. So I'm going to take a jumper and I'm going to put in the negative side of the LED and then I'm going to put it in one of these blue stripes over here. And then finally, I take my negative or my black wire from the battery and put it in a hole. So now we have our complete path and we take our battery and you can see our green LED lights up. For your battery, it may be wrapped in a piece of plastic. We do that for shipping um, for safety reasons. If you have to um, take the plastic off, you can use one end of the jumpers and take it off that way. So that's phase one. Okay, okay now we're ready to move on to phase two, which is adding our button. Pretty straightforward. If we look at our button, we have four little terminals. These side are connected and these side are connected. So all we have to do is put it in the breadboard and then uh, move a jumper cable. So we're gonna start by moving this first jumper cable 
and take that out. We only have to take one side out. Now if we look at it, the bottom of this has two little nubs along with the leads. These two little nubs are designed to fit in the ditch. It kind of secures it. So we want to fit it in the ditch, but what would be this right side, my right side? We want to make sure one of these leads is in the same row as our resistor. So if you remember back to our resistor, it was in row 11. So I'm going to try to put this, this one, which would be my bottom right, into row 11. If we put it into row 11, we make sure the nubs are in the ditch and then the button is secure. The last step is to take this jumper and it can move to any one on the left side, my left, that has the little connections for the, for the button, the, the leads. So in my case it's either row 9 or row 11. So I put it in row 9 and we're ready to test. So we hook up the battery, and then if I press a button, we get the green light. So as long as I press the battery, we're good to go. You can see how we have the full path. We go from the battery positive to this side of the switch, to the resistor, to the LED, back to the battery. So that is phase two. All right, now that we have phase two done, hopefully you had fun, let's summarize where we've been and what we're going to do in the future. First, we talked about analog electronics. We learned that there's just no computer hardware driving it. You got to play with a breadboard. You got to see LED, that polarity, the way it's oriented in a circuit matters. You got to see an introduction to circuit diagrams, how to do that complete path to get electricity to flow and you built your prototype. But what's next? What's phase three? What's phase four? Well, phase three is there's a second LED in your kit. Can you make both of them light up? There's also another jumper if you need it. See if you can do that on your own sometime. Well, what's phase four? Ah, that's the best. Phase four, look at the limitations of your breadboard. Notice how hard it was to put things in when you moved it around, how you know, wires fell out, how it didn't work, stuff like that. A breadboard's really nice to prototype, but we want to move on. What's next after that initial prototype? Well, that's this. Here's a little circuit board. Has the same component as yours, except for I solder this. So if I press this button, the blue light comes on, but it's a lot better unit. It's a little bit more durable. I can throw it, it still works. Phase four then would be design a little enclosure, print it off on our 3D printer, put that in, have a little box with an LED and a button. A lot of fun, possible. The only thing is phase three and four, that's for you when you're at um, my class. So hopefully I see you and we can do phase three and four together. Until then, have a great day, God bless, and go Hawks.